ഹലോ 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 ആ ഭയ ഹലോ ആ എന്റെ മനത്തിൽ വന്നു ആ മൈദ്രാ ജോയിൻ അതെ എന്റെ ഇൻകേ അഡ്മിൻ ജോയിൻ ആയാക്ക് നമുക്ക് ആക്സസ് വസ്തുത കേടാ അതെ അത് നാഗാദര അടച്ചു കറക്റ്റ് ലിങ്ക് ആണ് കറക്റ്റ് ലിങ്ക് മറ അക്കട കറക്റ്റ് ഇമെയിൽ ലൊക്കേറ്റ് ലിങ്ക് വെച്ചിന്ദ ആ ലിങ്ക് ജോയിൻ ആയപ്പെ నేను సేమ్ నిన్నట్ లింక్ ఏ చూసా 20 సెకండ్ 28th అండ్ 9th అని ఉంది ఆ అవును అవును హ్మ్ మనకదే ఈమెయిల్ వచ్చింది యాక్చువల్ గా నేను ఆ ఈమెయిల్ ని జాయిన్ అయ్యా బై ఇది అంత రికార్డ్ అవుతుంది బయ్య అచ్చా ఓకే ఓకే మ్యూట్ ఎల్ సరే వెయిట్ చేద్దాం అన్న వస్తారు ఆ ఓకే ఓకే Hi guys, good afternoon. Can you hear me? Hi, sir. You're audible. Uh, thank you, sir. Thanks for the confirmation. Please give me a few more minutes, else we will start. Sure, sir. Thank you, what, sir? sorry somebody said something you shared through whatsapp file yeah i shared one excel file in whatsapp okay. in whatsapp group which group you shared kiran sorry because we have permanent group you know, temporary group for temporary group ഫൈൽ ലെറ്റ് മീ നോ ഗൈസ് സോ ദൈ ഷെയർ ഇറ്റ് നോട്ട് ഗ്രൂപ്പ് uh is it the drive link google drive link you are referring to yeah google drive link is shared in permanent for a uh, group oh okay okay google i'm just trying to log in with that link however uh, it says the permission uh, issue i requested for the access with a comment there okay no, let me let me share it in the group i'll just uh, share it in a group give me just a minute
Has everyone received the file? Do we have a separate temporary group for uh, uh, this group? I mean, only for Power BI. I'm not part of it, I think. You're not part of it. Okay. Are you part of B00614? Yeah, permanent group 614, I'm part of it. Okay, then let me share it here only. Sinha, I guess you attended some sessions, right? I attended some of the sessions of SQL, but however, I couldn't complete the whole part of it. So okay. initial sessions I have attended. I just make some time and, you know, complete uh, before this batch ends. Okay. Yeah, I know you attended SQL. I am just assuming like you attended Power BI initial sessions also. No, no, this is my first ever, I mean, oh, yesterday okay. demo and this is my second session. Okay, sorry. I think uh, that's my mistake. No problem. Okay, I'm not part of that 60014. I think you just pinged me, right? No, yes, yes. You, uh, yeah, I got uh, the file. You shared the Excel file. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Aditya, have you received the file? Yes, Kiran. Yes, thank you. Yes. I'm just trying to make sure that everyone is with me so that we'll not have any confusion. Okay. I'm assuming everyone completed uh, Power BI desktop installation. Anyone has any issues, guys? Have you guys completed the installation process? If not, can you please quickly download it so that uh, we can discuss it? Okay, so everyone is very silent. So I'm assuming we don't have any issues and everybody is here. So now let me come here, guys. First, I'll open the Excel file and I'll give you a walkthrough of the file. Uh, once we get an understanding of this file, then we will start working with this. This is very common, guys. Even you, I mean, somebody asks you to prepare a report. First, we must understand the data source. If you don't understand the data source, we can't work with that. So that's the reason before you start any activity, sit, please pay attention and go through the data. Now, let me do the same thing here, guys. First, I open this super source. So I don't know how many of you heard the name called sample super source. Anyone heard this name? Very common data set, which is used in all uh, analytics sessions, guys. Or, uh, Excel sessions or Power BI sessions. Even mostly this is used by Tableau. Yeah. Now we are using the same data set. Here. So now here we have the file. And how many sheets we have here? Five, Five sheets. sheets. Yes. So first one, we have like orders sheet. In orders sheet, we have some data. Is it a table or is it a normal data? Is it a table because we are able to see the table design? We are able to see the table design. Where do you see the table design, sir? On top. Yeah. So now, if you come here, guys, we have some tabs here. So whenever you see this table design tab, it's a table, perfect table. Yeah. Else, it is not a table, guys. It's just a normal range. Let me show you that. So if I come to customers, yeah, even here, we have borders and even if we highlighted the headers here. But it is not a table, it is just a range. How do we know that it's a, just a range? Because we don't see table design here. So people who don't have experience with this, guys, let me explain this part. Then we will move on. Let me copy this data here. And I go to new Excel file. I just said control N. And let me paste my data here. So now, 
if i keep it here now i'm asking a question like is it a normal data or is it a table what do you guys think is it a normal data or a table sir? and why specifically we are talking about table can somebody tell me do we really need to care whether it is a table or not Because we have to work with the database. The database, uh, the data will store in the table formats. That's the reason the table is very important. But now I am not dealing with the database, right, sir? I am in Excel, so why should I care? Uh, coming to Excel, like uh, in table, like we have uh, specific. Uh, see, if I want to add any data, then automatically it will uh, take like if normal range, then it will not consider. Okay, so let's come here. So whenever, I mean, basically we use Excel for one first reason. One of the reasons is we want to store the data. When you want to store data, generally uh, we use Excel for that. Even you can store data in Word also, Microsoft Word also. But whenever you want to store some data, the first preference will be always given to Excel. Any idea why? Because in Microsoft Word, you can't do the powerful calculations. But in Excel, we can do those powerful calculations. Yeah. So here, you feel like there is a lot of importance to store the data. That's why you are storing it. But here, only storing the data is not only the concern. If you want to retrieve the data, this is also biggest concern. So you should be able to get it very easily. It's not something like, for example, let's say, your room is not properly organized. In that case, if you are looking for a particular item, you have to search everywhere. Instead of that, if you store your articles in a structured way, it will be easy to search for something. Now, this structured formation we call as table. So generally, we maintain the data rows and columns wise. When we maintain the data rows and columns wise, we call that as table. Then immediately you ask me, so this is arranged in rows and columns only. Why are you not considering this as table? So as a human being, we understand this as a table. But Excel will not read it as a table. In Excel language, this is just a range. Range is nothing but combination of rows and columns. So why are we going with this? First, we keep the respective header. Under that, we keep the respective data. So for example, if I keep the header as customer name, I enter customer ID here. Is that correct? Absolutely wrong. So you kept the header as customer ID. So you, you need to keep the respective data here. Sure. Okay. So here, it is not only storing the data. When you want to retrieve, if it is structurally organized, you can retrieve it very fast. Now, for example, somebody asked you to give, uh, they asked you for East region data. Can we uh, give only East region data? Is it possible, sir? Yes. How do we do that? Absolutely. You just come to the header, you apply the filter, and you uncheck everything, and you select only East and OK. Now, this is the data which belongs to East. So, we stored the data at the same time, we are able to retrieve it very fast. So, this is the reason whenever we want to store data, we store it in table format. Am I clear with this context? Anyone has any questions? So, that's the reason, especially in SQL sessions. When we uh, went, I mean, when we have gone through the SQL sessions, we learned all, so many things about tables. So how to create a table, how to modify a table, how to drop a table, and how to retrieve a data from a particular table. How do you combine one table with another table? How do you append data from one table to another table? We discussed all these things. So now here, this is not a table, guys. This is just a range. Now, let me take this data. I just paste it here. Now, what I will do, let me convert this data into table format. How do we do that? You can do it in multiple ways. If you come to home tab, can you see this format as table? Now, if you click on this, you see different, different layouts here. You can pick any specific layout 
and you can go with that. For example, let me take this. So the moment I select one layout, it is asking, you are trying to create a table. To create your table, where is the data for your table? <laughs> now I said, my data range is D22K22. Now, and it is asking one, one more confirmation that, do you have headers in the table? Yes, by checking this, you are giving the confirmation saying my table has headers. Now, if I say okay, then this normal data is converted to table. How do you know that if I click outside, you don't see table design because it's just a normal cell. Can you see this? But if I click any of the cells in the table, I'll be able to see this table design. So whenever you see this table design, guys, so this we consider as table. Am I clear with this? Anyone has any questions? No, are we good? Yeah, so let me close it up. I don't require this as of now. I just close it up. Then let me come back to this workbook where the name of the workbook is 01 underscore superspace. In this, we have orders work, worksheet, then we have customers worksheet, then we have products, then we have transactions and people. But only orders sheet contain orders table. Can you see this? Because we see table design. Can you check in customers? Is it a table? No. Products? It's not table. Transactions? No. And people? No. Only we have only single table that is orders table. Where do we have that? In orders sheet. Now some of you might be thinking like why are we discussing this so detailed? Let's come here guys. So I come to Power BI, I already opened Power BI desktop here. Now here, yesterday we discussed, select a data source or start with a blank report. Shall we directly go to the data source or shall we start with blank report? It's up to you. We can go to the data source. So let me click on Excel workbook. If you click on Excel workbook, then you need to navigate to your file. Now let's come here. I come to 01 underscore super source. And I say open. Can somebody tell me why I'm getting this? File is in? Absolutely, sir. Thank you so much. So when you are trying to use it or when you are trying to load the data from that file, you should not open it, guys. So I'll just close it up. Let's come back here. I say open. Now, the moment I connected to 01 underscore superstores, here you see so many things. Yeah, now here we have orders table, then we have customers sheet, then orders sheet, people sheet, products and transactions. Yeah, yesterday we discussed this. Anyone remember how to identify which is a table and which is a sheet? It's by the icon we see. By the icon. So which is the table, sir? The first one having blue column order, order table. Is the table. Row. can you see this this is a table remaining all our sheets here so now here what i'm doing is as as today is the first day let me select this orders sheet and now should i click on load yeah we are not sure whether we have the correct data or not so that's the reason. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to check whether we have properly cleaned data or not. Where do we do that? If you click on transform data, it will navigate you to, I mean, you will be navigated to Power Query Editor. So now we are in Power Query Editor screen. So in Power Query Editor, we call this as query. Can you see this? We connect it to orders sheet. And the name of the query is orders. And whatever we do, everything will be recorded here and you can see all the steps here. Yeah, now here, here, C 
same like Excel. How do we have the interface in Excel? You see pretty similar user interface here. We have home tab, then we have transform here, then we have add column, then we have view, tools, and help. Now let me come to home. So here under home tab, so again, same like Excel, we call this entire thing as ribbon bar. So you see most of the options which are used very frequently. Then if you come to transform, if you want to do any specific modifications to your data on the existing data, we use transform. Then if you want to add any new column, in that case, we use this add. Are we good with this guys? Anyone has any questions? No? Okay, let's move on. Everyone is very silent. I'm assuming no questions. So let's come here. I come to home tab. Now, the first thing what we need to do is we need to check are there any null values. Yesterday we discussed this part. Anyone remember? Do we have null values here? Yes, we have null values. because. How do you know that, sir? A uh, green line is not a complete one. Uh, it will reflect as a percentage. Absolutely. Now, if you take the first column here, the first column is row ID. If you see this row ID, now, if I come to view tab, if I go to column quality, you can see this. What is it saying? We have 11% empty cells and 89% we have valid data. And we don't have any errors. Now my question is, why did we get these empty cells? Yeah, almost like we have 387 rows. So if I take 10% of 387, almost 38 rows have blank cells. But why did we get that? That's what my question is. Can you see this? All these are null values. But why did we get all these null values? Anyone has idea? Extra rows beyond the table. Extra rows beyond the table. Then it should consider till 10 lakh 48,576 rows, right? Because after the table, you have so many blank cells in Excel, we have right. total 48,576 rows. Maybe while modifying, they deleted some of the data which are existing within the range, which they already used. I'm not sure, I'm just guessing. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, let me explain this, guys. Now, I go to super stores. Let me open this Excel file. If I open this Excel file, can somebody tell me what is my active cell? Seven. Sorry? I'm referring to A1. First one. You're saying A1? Okay. So now my active cell is A1. Can you see this? So I selected A1 cell. From A1 cell, I want to go to the last cell in my data. How to jump? Anyone has idea? Control shift down arrow. If you say control shift down arrow, you select it, sir. I don't want to select. I want to jump directly. Control down arrow. Control down arrow. So in that case, in the row only, you will go to the last row. No, let's come here. So we have home end key in keyboard. Let me say control end. If you press control end, it takes you to the last cell in your data. What is the last row guys? 388. But do we have data here? No. So if you scroll left side, you see something here. What do you see here guys? 
Is it a table set? That's not a table. It's not a table. Some extra formatting has been applied here. Somebody might have uh, here added excess borders. Now, if I scroll up, actually my data range is from A1 cell till B1345, I have my data. You can see this data stopped at 342. But when you are saying control end, you are going to B3 double The reason why here, let me bring up one more word. We call this as user. In this sheet, data range is from A1 cell to B345. But user range is from A1 cell to B388. So because of this huge gap, so 345, 388. So this gives me the difference of Forty-three rows, forty-three additional rows. Where do we need them really? Absolutely. So now let's learn how to get rid of them, guys. Yeah. How do we get rid of them? So now you come to the header. Once you are in Power Query Editor, yeah. Now if you see this here. Now, first thing what we have said is select all and we selected null values. Do we need null values here? No. Let me uncheck this and say okay. Yeah. Any idea why I'm getting this error? Again, same issue guys. So formula, sorry, this file is open. Now, let me come back here. I just refresh the preview. Now here, whatever the data I have, there is there are no blanks. So once we are checking the null cells, the next thing what we need to do is we need to check uh, whether we have the correct data type or not. Now you see this here for row ID. What is the data type we have? Number. Number. Again in number we have multiple uh, data types. Which number? Yeah. Is? Do we have any BSc, MPC students or engineering students? Any teacher? Sorry? We are asking about the number type. You can teach a basic number. That's yeah, absolutely. We have like whole number, we have integer, we have decimal. Even if you go to the SQL sessions, we discussed that we have big integer, we have tiny integer, we have integer, all these things we have. Right now, it is in whole number. How do you know that it is in whole number? Now, can you see this one, two, three? If you click on this, you will be able to see all the available data types. here. This is one way how you can uh, see the data type of a particular column. Then, let's come to the heading and I make a right click. If I make right click, you see some options here. One of the options is, yeah, here. what are we trying to do? We are trying to change the data type. So that is available under change type. Now, what is it selected, guys? Whole number. But I don't want uh, the number to keep it as number because if you take row ID, will you perform any mathematical calculation on row ID? Like they can come off uh, student roll number 10 plus student roll number 20. Do we do that? No. So that's the reason here, as we are not summarizing, guys, let's come here and I change it to text. Is it a text or a normal data? How do you know that, sir? Sorry? Text. Yeah, we see. Not only that. Absolutely, sir. Thank you so much. That's correct. So now the data has been aligned to left side. If you see, this is a text data. Text data is aligned to left. So now as you converted normal data to table, so here 
you can clearly see that it is aligned to them. This is good. Order ID, do we have any issue? We don't have null values and even the character looks, uh, the data type looks okay to me. Then we have order time. Yeah, where we worked with date and here even it is in proper date format. And even ship date, we don't have an issue. Then, then we have the ship mode. So now based on the ship date and time and based on the available dates, people use different, different ship modes. Especially whoever has Amazon Prime, you might have experienced it guys, same day delivery. Then we have customer ID. This also looks okay to me. Customer name, short name. Sorry, customer name. Then we have segment here. Then we have country. Then we have city. And can you see this column? One, two, three. Yeah, basically. So here, this is unnecessary column. Let's uh, remove that. How do we remove? If I make a right click on the column name and can you see remove options? Yeah. Now what I'm doing is, so I want to remove. So I say remove. Then I have state. Then I have post report. Again, post report, do you perform any calculations with post report? No. Absolutely no. Then what is the point to keep it as number? We don't require. So let's come here. I change this to okay, sorry. Yeah, now it's working. So we don't need this post report. So let me make a right click and I say remove. Then we have region, then we have product ID, then category. then product name, then we have sales, especially with sales. Do we, do we have any issue, guys? This month must be there, right, sir? Because if you take a normal product, definitely we are being <coughs> taxed. So if you go with tax competitions, definitely, for example, let's say there is a price. For example, let's say a product price is 50 rupees. Are we selling only for 50? No. So we do calculations. For example, let's say this is in 18% slab. So I take this into 9%. So out of 50, 4.5 is the 9% uh, here. Yeah, then let's come here. I multiply this with uh, one more 9%. The reason why on few products, the GST is like 18%. Yeah, CGST is 9% and SGST is uh, 9%. So if I put together, this becomes a round of nine. But every product may not be rounded off, guys. That's the reason. So here, we kept this in decimals. Then we have quantity. Quantity will be never, uh, it will not never have a decimal. So then we have discount if you have profit. So this is the data what we have here. Everybody, can you please expand your filter and remove null? Is it done?
uh, can can you repeat that how do we do like we just filtered out the nulls by filtering only the values in the first uh, column Okay. Kiran, I was just asking, uh, how do we remove the null values um, just how by removing it values? from the filter? Okay, if you expand the filter, here you see null. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have them. Please uncheck that. Okay, it's just like applying the filter without having null values. Without? Just by removing the null values, we're filtering the remaining data. Yes, absolutely. Okay, okay. That's a valid question. Let me repeat that. Yeah, here, why are we doing this? People ask me, whoever is coming from Excel background, they will ask me, why are we not removing null values? If it is Excel, you remove the entire row. Yeah, but in Power BI, guys, we don't have the option to delete the rows. That's the reason here what we are doing. We uncheck that, then we continue with the further process. Now, if you come here, yeah, here what I have done, I expanded my filter, then I remove the null values. So this is how we take out the null values. Am I clear? I think somebody asked, Sinha, am I clear now? Yeah, yeah, you're clear. But when I'm just trying to expand that first column, Okay. Uh, I also see blank along with null. What does it mean? Blank along with null. Right. I mean, it's one of the. It's also. Uh, if I can send you a screenshot, I will try to. Uh, you can put it in the chat. I just send it. In WhatsApp? No, no, in the same. Uh... Okay. You have blank and null. Generally, it is not possible. Okay. When you ask it to remove the nulls, I actually clicked on remove empty there is an option to remove empty no maybe does does that uh, is that the reason why i'm having blank now no in that case can you please load the data again uh -huh, okay okay i'll try to because as it is first day let's not have any confusion let's make everything smooth To close the sheet, uh, can you please navigate and close and apply is there. I can just close without applying first thing. Then I'm in my Power BI desktop from there. I can import data from Excel. Right, I'm, I was able to do it. Is it done? Yes, I'm just uh, applying some of the filters which you suggested, like removing the ones and nulls. Okay. And the postal ID. Postal ID, these two you removed, no? Postal code also. Yes, I'm with you now. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. 
So here we have the data. Yeah, now we removed the null values and even we changed the data. Now let's come here. I say close and apply. If I say close and apply, Kiran, you removed one complete column. What is the name of the header? No, if you apply that operation for one column, it will be applied to the entire row. No, no, no. In data, you removed one uh, complete header, right? It's not required. What is that? Uh, somehow your voice is not very clear. No, no, what I'm asking, you remove one complete column, right? The column header, complete data, you remove from the data itself, right? It's not required. Which uh, column? We, we had one unnecessary column, we removed that. Are we done? Yes, can I move on? Yes, can I close and apply? Okay. Now, I'm in Power BI. Uh, yeah, Power BI desktop. Yes. Now, let's come here. Let me talk about this. If you see the Power BI user interface here, you see similar tabs here, like same like Excel. <clears throat> so on your left hand side, you see three icons. If you place your cursor on the first one, it says report view. And second one, it says table view. And third one, it says model view. Yeah, last one, we have DAX query view, we'll come to this guys. But first let me explain what is this report view. Now, can you see the dotted borders here? Whatever we have in the dotted borders, we call that place as canvas. This is where we are going to prepare our reports. And using those reports, we create dashboard. Now, this is the place what is dedicatedly used for report preparation. Then if you come to table view, here it looks like similar to your Excel interface. You will be able to see rows and columns of the data. Then let's come here, which is model view. In model view, you will be able to see the relationship from one table to another table or from one table to multiple tables here. So very simple, the reports will be prepared in report view, data can be viewed in table view and relationships can be viewed in model view. Are we good with this? Any questions or should I repeat? Then let's come here. I come to report view. Yeah. Here, if I go to orders, you see all the headers what we have here, guys. And the headers are arranged in alphabetical order. Can you see this here? Yeah. Now, I have a very simple question that I'm trying to see category-wise sales. Can you please prepare a small visualization for category-wise sales? How do we do that? Yeah, but before that, you need to take the visualization, which is required. So now what I'm doing, let me take clustered column. Okay, now here, what I'm trying to do is, I'm trying to draw a visualization where category wise, I want to see sales. Now it can be handled in multiple ways, guys. Now, if you come to the header, can you see a checkbox here? If you click on this, your category has been moved to X axis. 
Then let's come here. I go to sales and let me select the summation symbol here. Then it is added to y-axis. Can you please try this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I have taken clustered column, sir. Clustered bar, bar is like vertical one, sorry, horizontal one, and column is like vertical. Yep, yeah, is it done? Then can you please add one more visualization, one more page, and here, can you prepare region-wise profit percentage? I want region-wise profit percentage, guys. Can you please do this? Yeah, that's what the question said. Give it a try. Region wise, profit percentage. If it is Excel, can we do it? If yes, how do you prepare that same requirement or? How do you work with the same requirement in Excel? Okay. Yeah, here I have created a new page. Okay. Then. Click on the clustered column. Okay, let's come here. Now here, for example, let's imagine the whole profit is like 100%. Out of 100%, I'm trying to find out what's the contribution from each region. So whenever you want to talk about composition, we use pie chart. So let's come here. I take pie or donut. You can take anything. So let me take pie. I'll take by here. Let me drag and drop region and let me draw, drag and drop profit. Is it done? Region profit. Region, profit. Region and profit. Hope you can understand the difference between a column chart and a pie chart. So in column chart, what happened? We were able to compare. But when it comes to pie chart, it gives you a complete understanding or the overall picture of your business in a single view. I dragged and dropped customer name. First
Uh, Kiran, how to change uh, the, the chart type? Is there any option like in Excel while preparing the dashboards? If I right click, then I can change my chart type. Here, is there any such kind of option? Can you can you say it again, sir? Okay. In Excel, while preparing the dashboards, like uh, if let's say if I uh, prepare one uh, like uh, one column chart, but I want to change my chart type into pie chart. Uh, I'll click the right click, and uh, there is option called. Uh, change chart type no so when we are picking a particular visualization we okay. deal with specific requirements mm -hmm. yeah when it's a specific let me mention that here guys So now first I have a simple question. We do that, then we will move on with our friend's question. Now here, the problem is guys, I want to increase the font size. I'm not able to properly read it. Can somebody help me to increase the font style? Okay, let me tell you where is that option. Now, once you select the visualization, first select the visualization, guys. I just selected this visualization. Can you see the borders here? This, these borders, sir. Now, once you have selected the visualization, go to the format. Under this, you have all the options. Which one, sir? This page. This one? Meaning isolated different things. Okay. This page has one. It's quite simple, sir. What are the Okay. Sir, here the problem is this visualization looks okay to me, but can I present it? Now, can you read those numbers first to problem? We are not able to write. So now let's come here. Sir. If I come to the first visualization, so here I have some values on the x-axis. Now, my first problem, I want to change the font of this x-axis. So, let me select this visualization. And if you come to format, can you see x-axis? If you come to x-axis, so here you see the values here. 
Now I change this line to 20. Is it visible now? The same way, let me scroll down. I go to Y axis and here, let me scroll down. I come to values and I change this to 20. Now, is it visible? Very important, right? Yeah. Then, can you see the header here? Even we have like sum of sales by category. We are not able to properly read it. So, same thing. So, now here, I'm trying to change it. So, all these are the modifications we need to perform. Okay. So, but do you see anything related to title here? We don't have. So, let's come to general. And if you come to general, can you see title? Now, here it is saying sum of sales by category. Let's not keep these default uh, uh, titles there. Take out this and I say category wise sales. Yeah. Next thing, I don't want to keep it like very small. So let me keep it like 40. And here, I make it center alignment. And let me give some background color. I'm giving a background color, something like this. Is it done? Okay. Let me do one more activity here. That is, do we have borders to this visualization? No, we don't have the border. So let me select this visualization. Again, I go to format. In format, we have two sections here. One is visual and another one is general. So I come to general. Let me go to FX. So here, we have the option for visual border. Right now, it is off. Let me turn it on. Yeah, and I'll expand this visual border. And let me give some uh, blue color like this. <coughs> Is it making sense? Huh? <coughs> this presentation is also important, right? End of the day, it makes a lot of difference. Yes, are we good? Can I move on? Any questions? Sir? No? Can you try the same thing with page two? We have a pie chart here, right? Let's do some changes here. Sir. Is it done, sir? Okay. What are the modifications you have done?
Why you made you change the less than to sign? Okay, but no, that's very nice. But what is legend? Okay, can you see the color code here, sir? What is the meaning of this blue color? It is indicating east region. Okay, this color is indicating west. This color is indicating central, and this orange color is indicating south. Now you see the color coding here. This is what we call as legend. <coughs> Now, let's come here. I'm going to format this with you. First, I selected this. Let's come to format. Now, can you see the legend here? It is on. Now, let me expand this. So, right now, it is center right. So, I got into here. Now, let me keep it at bottom center. Now, it looks much better. Yeah. Then, let me come to text. The text size is like 10 now. Let me increase this a bit. So that are properly visible. It will be properly visible. Is it making sense now? Yeah, we are done with the legend. Now let's come here. So we have some values here. We are not able to read them. So I select this visual again. So let me go to format your visual. Now, if you come to detail labels. Now here we said outside. Then let me come to values. If you come to values, let me change this. I change it like 25. And let me give some background color. Sorry, this is font color, not background color. Background is set to auto. <coughs> And also, if you see this here, we have very important point called display units. This is a major difference between Excel and Power BI. In Excel, you don't get this K directly. For this, you have to do formatting changes. But here, the display units are adjusted automatically. So based on the data, it is displaying the values in thousands. Yeah, same like earlier, let me come to general. And I go to FX. Let me go to visual border. Let me turn it on. Then let's come to title. And here. I'll keep it into central alignment. And let me come here. I change the uh, title to 30 points. Now the same visualization looks like this. Is it making sense now? This is what I asked everyone to do. Shall we move on? Online participants, any questions? No, Kiran. No? Okay. I know these are very basics, but I'm just trying to get hands-on with the basics, guys. That's the reason I'm discussing all these things. If you are interested, you can give some background color like this. Thank you. 
Kiran, uh, like you change the, the font size for this region, West, West, South, Central. That which, is in, which one you want me to change? Uh, region uh, font size. That is in visual only. No? Are you talking about this one? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, we call this as legend. Now, if you come to format your vision, and here, can you see detail labels? Did you find it out? Yes, yes, I'm doing that. Okay. If you come to legend, you have the all the options here. Kiran, like I'm not able to do that. I'm able to do like the Spanish, but I'm asking the region west to east, south, central. I want to change font size. It's very small. Kira, I'm so sorry. There is a lot of background noise around you. So I'm not able to clearly understand. Can we discuss now? Sure, you were asking some question. Sorry, I stopped you in the middle. Uh, I got it. Okay, I got it. You got it? Okay. Yes. So, basically, what we have done here is, guys, from superstores, we got the data. <coughs> We got the data from orders sheet and using this order sheet, we made some transformation and we loaded that to Power BI and from there, we performed some visualizations here or we created some visualizations. Any questions so far? No? Are we good? Okay. Let's start saving this file, guys. Now, let me say save as. So I don't need this file. I'll just close it up. So even you guys also please close it up. Let's open another file. Is uh, PBIX the standard uh, where we save all the Power BI files? Yes. The extension will be PBIX. Okay. Irrespective of the source, if it is Excel or SQL, whatever it is, we save in the PBIX. No, format. when you say PBIX, it is related to Power BI. Okay, okay. Sir, what is the extension we use in Power BI to save the file? What can you say it again, sir? What is the extension we use in Power BI to save the file? PBIX. Uh, sorry? PBIX. PBIX. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. PBIX. 
any attachment we need to save in the same format like uh, PPI uh, in real time only. Yeah, we have few more. We'll discuss that in the next session, sir. Okay. Now, let's come here. I'm taking a blank report. Now, in this case, let me go with Excel workbook. Is everyone here? Okay. Now let's come here, guys. Now, if you load orders table, we will not have all those issues like having some excess non values. We will not have all those issues. So that's the reason. When you have an option to select uh, a table or a sheet, in that case, you better give preference for table instead of uh, a sheet here. Yeah, because sheet contains a lot of issues. But table is like well organized. So that is the reason we use the source as tables the most. <clears throat> now, whoever is done, let's come here. I'm going to select customers and I select orders, not orders. Let me select people and transactions. We selected three sources, guys. Yeah, are we good? Okay. Now, let me say transform data. This is the reason I asked everyone to take a new file there. Because earlier we tried with only one query. But now we will work with three queries. First, let's come here. Does anyone see any issue here? Yes, we have null values. Absolutely, null values. So let me expand this null values. And I take out the null value and say OK. Yeah, then I'll go through the headers here. And if you see this here, we have some unnecessary columns here. Now what I will do, uh, you may not have it guys. Now let me select all these things. I selected all these things by holding the shift key. And let me go with a right click on any one of the cells. And I say, remove columns. Is it done? Okay. How, like, how, do, how did we select three columns? Shift and uh, right arrow. Okay, okay. Yes, absolutely, sir. Yes, thank okay. you. I'm done. Okay. Can you please come to... Oh, I selected uh, people. Okay. Can you please come to customers? And again, here, tell me what's wrong. Sorry, sir. Same issue, null values. We have some null values here. So let's come here. I just say uncheck null and say OK. Yeah, rest of the data, it looks pretty OK to me. What if the customer ID is null, but the other uh, information is? I mean, some information is missing only in customer ID and other is a valid information. Are we missing that? So in this case, uh, do you have the idea of primary key? Yes, Kiran, in SQL basics, you said that. Yes, sir. So when you define any key as primary key, guys, there are two characteristics of primary key. It must be unique and no null values. When you are considering customer ID, if you consider this as your primary key, in that case, it should not have any null values and it should not be duplicated. That is the reason we are making sure that there are no, sorry, there are no null values here. Okay. Did I answer your question, Jim? Yeah, yeah, we're assuming that the first uh, 
column itself as the primary key and we are ensuring it's not being null. Yes. Okay. Can we move on? Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's... By mistake, I loaded different file, guys. Now let me load it back. Sir, sorry for interrupting. No, no, please go ahead. Sir. I, so after the completion of Power BI course, we are providing any Microsoft Power BI certification, sir. We are talking about certification. Yeah, yeah. I should have forgot to ask that question. Sorry. We have PL three hundred certification. Uh, sorry, I did not get to you. We have an exam which is called as PL three hundred. PL three hundred, okay. Yes. Which is connected by Exility or uh, Microsoft, sir? No, it is from Microsoft, sir. It is, uh, and then uh, it is uh, equal to Power BI, uh, sorry, Microsoft certified Power BI. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So what is you the will, you yeah. will become a Microsoft Power BI uh, associate something? Let me let me quickly okay. show you that, sir. I think uh, the exam fees itself somewhere around seven thousand or eight. Power BI Data Analyst Associate. This is the designation you get, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, Power BI Data Analyst Associate. Okay. What is the qualifying uh, marks for that? How many questions, exam pattern and all? Sir, here the problem is, uh, yeah. every year you have to renew this certificate. Renew, we need to uh, renew it. Uh, yeah. okay. And we'll, we'll be given 100 minutes to write the exam. 100 minutes? Yes. Okay. Okay. Every year we need to take that exam. Sorry? Every year we need to take that exam. Yeah, I, I'm not sure about the renewal process. Okay. No issue. Even Thank for you. me it is pending, sir. For quite a long time I'm planning to do it, but I'm not doing it. Okay. So this month I'll definitely complete that. Now, let's come here. What I'm doing, sir, uh, something you asked, you asked me customers, people, transactions. No, uh, let's take products. Because we have an important point here to discuss. Customers, products, and transactions. Yeah, delete. Delete from the border and load products. Sorry. Okay, and already we selected uh, two, three tables, right? I have deleted that uh, people. Okay. How to add now to products in the same uh, Power Query editor? In Power Query editor, can you see the new source? Okay. So click on the Excel workbook. If you click on the Excel workbook, you go to Superstores and uh, load only products. Please stay here, guys. Don't do anything. So we will, we all will work parallelly here. Has everyone loaded, guys? Online participants? Yes, yes, we loaded the customer transactions and products. And how about products?
जिसके अंदर सर उनका कस्टमर ट्रांजेक्शन कस्टमर ट्रांजेक्शन एंड प्रोडक्ट्स ओके ना भाई सेलेक्टेड प्रोडक्ट्स एंड कैन यू सी समथिंग लाइक दिस वी हैव प्रोडक्ट आईडी कैटेगरी सब कैटेगरी प्रोडक्ट नेम यस यस देयर इज अ प्रॉब्लम हियर कैन समबडी टेल मी व्हाट इज द प्रॉब्लम वी हैव कॉलम हेडर्स एब्सोल्युटली फर्स्ट कॉलम यस प्रोडक्ट आईडी इन टेक्स्ट या इफ यू सी दिस हियर जनरली वी शुड हैव दिस हेडर्स इन द but we have them in the now here what do we do let me come here if you go to home tab there is a group called transform here can you see transform group mm -hmm. in this there is an option called use first row as headers yes yeah so we call this activity as promoting the header so here we are promoting the headers guys from first row to the header row so i say use first row as header now your headers will be at first place here yeah do we have any null values no no so now let's come here i say close and apply it's loading if i say close and apply under data pane here you see customers products and transactions is it done okay now let me ask you a weird question guys whoever comes from excel background they know the pane here can you see customers under customers we have city country customer id customer name postal code region segment and state do we have any bit sales here in customers no we don't have sales information here but if you come to transactions in transactions you have sales information sorry yes yeah we have customer id i'll come to that sir so now here let's imagine your business asked you to prepare segment wise sales report now what i will do let's come here i go to cluster column chart <coughs> let me drag and drop segment from customers and let me drag and drop sales to the visualization then my visualization created like this am i confusing sir so segment that is import segment yes y axis i kept sales now i have a question here sir how are you able to get the data from two different tables because we are using but three different tables right See, customers is different, transactions is different. How are you able to pick the fields from two different tables? So to understand that, let's come to model view. Can you please click on model view? Are you in the model view? Yes. Now, if you see this here, we have products table, then we have customers table. and in between i have transactions table i hope everyone has the same interface yeah now here a relationship has been created from customer table to product table what is common in between both of them is customer id 
This is a SQL concept which I was referring yesterday. Can you see this here? Yeah, from products to transactions, we use the product type. Using that common key, we created the relationship. So this feature we don't have in Excel. So this we call as data model. Can you see this here? So this is this entire thing we call as data. Now, as we have established the relationship and using this, you can connect multiple tables and you create the requirements. Online participants, am I clear or am I confusing? Yes, Kiran. Yes, Kiran. Can you please repeat once again, Kiran? Uh, we already dragged the segments and the sales. So now let me take out this. What I will do is I do everything from scratch. Guys. Let me show you the interesting point here. Same, I'm repeating my question that I'm trying to see segment by segment. Okay, huh? Now, let me drag and drop segment to the visualization. This is coming from customer step. Yeah, then I come to transactions. Let me drag and drop sales to uh, visualization from transactions. Now we are getting equal bar. Is it correct? No. So here the problem is guys, there is no relationship between customers and transactions. Now what I'm trying to do is I will find out what is common column in both of them. So if I speak in SQL language, customer ID in customer's table is a primary key. And customer ID in transaction table is foreign. You create the relationship from customer ID of customer to customer ID of transactions. A relationship will be created. Now, if you say save, then a relationship is established. Now, using this relationship, we have prepared this visit. Am I clear, Shiva? Any questions? Yes, Kiran. Okay. Clear? Okay. So this Kiran, is what, one. What yeah. is that one to many, many mean? This is the one. cardinality. Okay. One to means from one uh, field of customer ID to all the fields of transaction, is it? See, for example, let's say I'm a customer. Okay. For me, one customer ID is created. Okay. But if I take a supermarket data, I go to supermarket multiple times and I purchase multiple items from there. Okay. So in transactions table, one customer is doing multiple transactions. Mm -hmm. Okay. So my customer ID will reflect multiple times here. Oh, okay, okay. But in customer's table, I, I you require your yes. Okay. So that's what one to many is. Okay, makes sense. Thank you. That's what we call as cardinality. Again, that that the, this is the concept of SQL. Okay. Are we good? Any questions? No. So now, how do you feel? Is Power BI difficult or easy? Very easy. Sorry? Very easy. Yeah, that's the right uh, explanation, sir. That's correct. You know everything, everything is easy. It's, it's like easy because we are getting data from the Microsoft Excel. Like we write the query from other database. Even that is also quite easy, sir. Okay. Even if you want to get data from other sources, that is also quite easy. But while getting the data, we do a lot of transformations. That we need to be really patient and you have to do it one by one. Then it makes uh, sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, any other questions? No?
Okay. Now I have a simple requirement, guys. Can you prepare a sales trend? I want to see the sales trend. Sales trend by date, do you mean that? Like period? Obviously, when you say trend, that is oh. by date, right, sir? Order date and sales from transactions. Yeah, give it a try. If you don't get it, I'll explain, sir. By any chance, anyone completed? Yeah. How did you do it, sir? Okay. Which visualization you have taken? Line chart. Yeah. Whenever we want to take trends, sir, it's better to go with line chart. The best example, if you want to see the share price, that will be a line chart. Yeah. That is the reason. Let's come here. I select line chart. Okay, let me drag and drop order date and let me drag and drop sales. That's it. Here, it shows me year-wise trend. We have one more important point here. Can you see couple of arrows below the visualization or above the visualization. There are some arrows. Do you see them? If I give some space at the top, that will be moved to the top. Now you see them here. <coughs> yeah. So this we call as drill down. Now right now, I am presenting at year wise. If I go to the next level in the hierarchy, it shows quarter wise. If I go to the next level, it shows month wise. So, as an end user, people will be really interested for the drill down option. Any questions, guys? Am I clear with this? So if I want to come back, I can just click on this uh, upward icon, upward arrow, then you can go to the previous level. So then the cosmetic changes like increasing the font size, giving the background color, all these things, you know, you guys can modify it. So this is how we load a data into Power BI and we perform the basic transformations and we load it back from Power Query Editor Power BI. Then we create the visualization. This is what we are going to do. In this process, we run into different, different activities. That's where we are going to use DAGs, we are going to use M language. We perform all those things. 
the straight answer if you compare with Excel. If you know Excel, Power BI is really, really easy. Yeah, then if anyone has any questions, uh, please ask your questions, guys. Else we'll stop it here for today. Any questions, guys? Sinha, Aditya, and Shiva. I'm good, Kiran. Like, even I'm good from my side, Kiran. Okay. <laughs> guys, I'm sorry. So, we'll stop it here for today. Uh, for the last four days, uh, I have severe cold. I'm not able to speak properly. So, we will continue the rest of the topics next Saturday. Sure, Kiran. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Kiran. Thank you, Kiran. Thank you. Thank you, Kiran. Thank you.